Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech looking at Magic Finance here for January 2016. Super excited about this. The entire market is in flux because we're transitioning into modern season. But before I get to that, I'd like to talk a little bit about my process in creating these videos. Lots of people have asked me, so where do you get your information? How do you come to the conclusions that you have? These are the main sites that I look at. MTG Stocks, Card Kingdoms, Buy List Price, and whether they have things in stock. MTG Goldfish, especially for online stuff. MTG Top 8. ABU Games, especially for kind of the older graded stuff. Quiet Speculation, although I am not a member of that site. They specifically have some free tools on there that look at Buy List. And Star City Games. I am a member of Star City Games site. I usually hate pay to play content. There is one writer on there that is extremely good. In putting together a video like this, I probably spend about six hours reading through sites, coming up with my guesses on where cards are going, why they're moving in the direction they are, and what is gonna cause them to continue to move or in some cases crash. A lot of people have asked me to move this to a weekly series. Given the time intensive nature of this particular type of video, I would need to free up some time where I'm currently doing other things. If I get to the $350 level on Patreon, I will turn this into a weekly feature. I'm about halfway there currently. I'm at about 170 to 210, depending on week to week. I would be happy to do this on a weekly basis. There's so much going on in Magic Finance, uh, but it would take out a huge chunk of my time because the research on this is just so heavy. So if you're interested, please head over to Patreon. Thank you, everybody who's over there making this possible currently. Let's move into the fun stuff. Modern season is upon us. We've got a brand new archetype and a bunch of cards have started to jump or shoot way up. It is Black Eldrazi. Heartless Summoning is a card in Modern. Crazy. This card is wonderful. I played it for a while in Standard. Had a lot of fun with the card. Being able to ramp with an enchantment, which is often really difficult for people to remove main deck, is really, really nice. I like Heartless Summoning a lot more than some of the earlier builds that I saw that were running Mana Rocks. Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth has shot up and I'm leaving it on the buy list because this is a casual EDH commander favorite. This card was very valuable before the reprint. Yes, there's a lot of them out there, but it could be years before we see another reprint. It is a wonderful card in commander and in modern. Eye of Ugin has shot way up. It's up at about $40, which is crazy for a rare that just got a reprint. I would hold on to them though through modern season. They could continue to stay high or even go a little bit higher. It is such a powerful card for this particular archetype and we haven't fully explored the Oath of the Gate Watch cards. There could be some other cards in there that really benefit from this in modern. I know that this card will see a reprint at some point. I don't know if it's gonna be any sooner though than 15, 16 months from now. So if you need them for modern, hold on to them. A lot of modern cards are shooting up right now. Voice of Resurgence has went way up. I would hold them still. Given the recent bannings, fair green white decks have gotten significantly better. The fact that your opponent can't just combo win on turn four with Splinter Twin gives you more time to beat them down with a fair deck. And Voice of Resurgence is one of the best ways to deal with the control decks that may be taking over the environment. Experiment 1 has been seeing some play in some very fast aggro or zoo builds. This is a really cheap foil. I would jump on it now. I like the card a lot in Modern. Ghost Quarter has been printed several times, but it is extremely powerful. We see the Arbiter starting to jump up in price. People are making death and taxes work in Modern. I believe that's going to be a top eight deck for the next Modern season is some type of a mono white or white black controlling death and taxes deck. And Ghost Quarter is so much powerful than Tech Edge in the current environment because of Tron. 
it takes out their tower or their power plant that you must take out to break up their assembling that super powerful combination. Foils are going to continue to rise. I am picking up both non-foils and foils for Ghost Quarter. I also really like the Arbiter. If he continues to see play, he could easily double in price over the modern season. This is an EDH one out there. I really, really like Hedron Archive for EDH specifically. It may see some play in Standard also. The idea that you can have a Soul Ring that draws you two cards later when you don't need it is incredibly good in both ramp decks, in Standard, and in EDH. The foils are really inexpensive right now. I can see lots of EDH decks wanting these foils. Ugin's up at about 45 bucks. I would hold him. He could continue to go up over the modern season. Ulamog has already jumped since my last investment video. He was at the $12 to $15 range, and I recommended buying him. Ulamog is getting played more than Ugin in some deck lists. Ulamog has so much power when Ulamog hits the board. Exiling two permanents deals with a lot of problems from your opponent. I would continue to buy Ulamogs at this point. My guess is that Ulamog is going to eventually reach the level that Ugin is at, and then they'll climb together because of their playability in Modern. Pia and Kiron, Nailer, are playable in Modern. Modern is a crazy diverse format right now. There's a lot of people brewing with them. I like this, especially in decks that ramp them out a little bit early. If the game is fair, being able to sacrifice your artifacts, do some damage, control the board state is incredible. I would not buy the non-foils because the card is not seeing a huge amount of play in standard. There's going to be a lot of people out there with them that are ready to dump them when they rotate out of standard. But the foils long term could go way up in modern. People are starting to foil out their modern decks and... If this continues to see play, great card for modern. Very cool little deck list that we've got there also. A lot of people have asked me about Nyssa and why I didn't put Nyssa on my top 10 list. I was not impressed with Nyssa. Nyssa has already dropped to $15 and will continue to drop. I have not seen a good deck with Nyssa in there. If there is a good deck, it's only a standard deck. I don't see Nyssa as playable in modern. She's one of the Planeswalkers I'm currently avoiding. A lot of people have asked me about Expeditions. The new Expeditions, should they be going for them? The Filter Lands are played as Singletons in Modern. And very few decks actually play them. The demand on them is going to be much, much, much less than the fetches were from the last set. I would avoid them at this point. I believe that they're going to hit a 10 or 20, maybe even 30% drop in the next three to four months. By contrast though, I would end up buying things like Mana Confluence cards that could see play as a four of, have much more potential to move up. The one exception that I've got right now with regards to the filter lands is Firelit Thicket. The fact that it produces double red and double green while cards like Court of Calling and Kiki Jiki are going up means that it is the outlier for the filter lands. Wasteland's up around $300 currently. I am selling it. It's probably not going to drop that much. I actually like the artwork from the Judge Foils better. It's beautiful. I can see going for a playset, but I guessing that they'll drop down to about the 250 range and then they're worth trading into. Been a lot of crazy buyouts going on. It's very difficult to have confidence in TCG Player right now for prices. It's clear that a small group of individuals or single stores can manipulate prices over there and we see crazy things currently happening in the environment. Mind Slicer was up like to $70 for a short period of time for no particularly good reason. Um, Peter over at MTG Stocks uh, has a great article that covers this. It's something to watch very, very, very carefully right now, especially when trading. You can get really crazy, unusual prices because of 
how manipulatable the older market is. Commander cards are going up though, and not all of them are because of buyouts. Palincron is probably because of a buyout, will come back down, but the new level for Palincron is not going to be $10 to $12. It's going to be $22 to $23. This is a really powerful combo EDH card. Uh, this is one of the few cards that Card Kingdom had banned in their EDH tournaments. Uh, when you won one of those tournaments, you were allowed to ban a card, and this one was banned from it. Commander foils are up across the board, and green alternatives to Prophet of Crufix are up across the board. Oracle of Moldiva, Seaborn Muse, Vorinplex, all of these big green, very popular mana ramp cards in EDH are going up. Be aware of their new prices. Seaborn Muse will fall back down a little bit, but Vorinplex and Oracle of Modiva, I can see staying high until they see another reprint. Now is the time to pick up foils that are underpriced in Modern. There's a lot of great cards that are starting to see play, and the foil versions are really low on some of these. Wild Nicotle, Destructive Revelry, Become Immense. As aggro decks are used to qualify people for the Pro Tour, these are all going to go up in value. And Kira, as a foil, is $21, where her normally is like $15. You should be expecting to pay two times, maybe even three times, for the price of some foils in Modern. To have the, it at only a 50% premium for a much rarer card is unheard of. If the card is seeing play in Modern, and Kira is clearly seeing play in Murpho type decks. Other foils to look at from the most recent set are Natural State, Goblin Dark Dwellers, Eldrazi Dispatcher, and Storm Chaser Mage. Since I started to put together these slides, Storm Chaser Mage has already went way up. I would hold it at the $15 range. During standard, this is going to be a very, very popular card. Long term in some of the more competitive EDH decks, also a very cool card. Eldrazi Displacer, long term, super powerful EDH fun card. Goblin Dark Dweller could see play in modern, and that's what's going to determine the foil price here long term. I believe that it is playable, and I'm gambling on them in foil. Natural State is a great sideboard card. Really, really powerful. One green, instant speed. Destroy enchantments or artifacts with converted mana cost three or less. This is going to be a staple in modern sideboards. I would definitely pick up a playset in foils. Back to the Storm Chaser Mage. It's one of the coolest decks out there right now in standard. It's this prowess beatdown, which is playing four Jaces, which is keeping Jaces price high. It's playing four Abbot of the Crow Keeps. Four Monastery Swift Spheres, four Storm Chaser Mages. This is a very fast deck, and it has a lot of depth to it also. The Jaces give you a late game and a way to get through some extra damage later after he's flipped. I really, really like this deck a lot. This is probably my favorite of the aggro decks in Standard. I would look for foils in this deck short term. The only ones that I would hold on to really long term are the Abbot, the Swift Sphere, and Chase. The rest of these are going to rotate out and drop in price. Goblin Guide keeps going up. Crazy to see a red card worth more than some dual lands that could be reprinted at any time. Okay, it's only worth more than Plateau. Maybe that doesn't count. I would not be holding on to my Goblin Guides long term. I'm sure this is one that's going to be reprinted in the next Modern Masters. I might hold on to them through the modern season if I needed to play red. You have to have them. They are just so good for the burn decks. But the prices just keep going up. This will go back down to a $20 card when it's reprinted. So hold on to it at your own risk. There was a buyout on the GP foils. No one's buy list price, though, has went up. The prices you see on TCG Player of like $170 are insane. All of the stores are paying only slightly more for the GP foils than they are for the regulars. Most burn players are budget players, and they don't care about the foil that much. 
there also are people with stacks of these GP foils, they could flood back into the market and drop in price. Be careful of that highly inflated price. Inquisition versus Thought Seize. I did not think I would see the day where Inquisition was significantly more expensive than Thought Seize. Part of it is that Modern has both Robots and Burn right now, which are super powerful, super fast decks that are not good to be taking life from yourself to help your opponent kill you. So Thought Seize is not that popular currently. I'm still picking up Thought Seizes. If the environment rotates some, changes a little bit, Thought Seize could be back in favor. It's still a great card. Inquisitions are an uncommon. They're massively printed in that deck. I've seen several stores with X on the shelf at around $75. Great deal on that modern event deck, but it's been a great deal for months. I would sell off any extra copies you have of Inquisition. This is the type of card that could make it into a dual deck or some other supplementary product just to bring down the price and sell that product. I would not speculate on Inquisitions at this point. To search through your library for the best value and the best cards, become a subscriber to the channel. Once again, thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. If you want early access to these slides, becoming a patron at even the $1 level does that. Uh, once I hit $350 on Patreon, I will move this series to be a weekly series here on Mythic MTG Tech. Until next time, choose the cards wisely.